I picked up yesterday this MEP 1040. It's the next generation from the MEP 803 Alpha. I actually never really thought I would get my hands on one of these but it was marked as a parts unit. So I figured I would try to get it to run. Uh, they said they got no power or no anything out of it. So I haven't really done much off camera. I wanted to document everything going through it. And I offloaded it off the truck yesterday. And the only thing that I did off camera was I removed the batteries and all of the stuff that was inside the bins. And looking over it, the things that I noticed where it's probably gonna be hard to get in here. A lot of the wire connections are loose. You can see there's one here, a couple things on the starter, a couple things on the alternator, the ground. Biggest thing I noticed was, can you get in there and see that? All right, you can probably see it right there. Uh, a really bad splicing job on these and the label, I think it says they're grounding wires coming off the alternator. The main breaker in here was open. Then this wire, was not connected, it's marked ground, ground. Some other connections look like they've been messed with. I noticed the motor mounts or the vibration isolators that are on the generator side are gone. That's all I noticed immediately, fluids are drained. Then on this side, the motor mount over here unbolted. There was some hardware and stuff sitting at the bottom. Again, I just picked it all up. The wire diagram, auxiliary fuel line, a whole bunch of hardware and stuff was in here. So my initial thought looking at it, because there's some other bolts and things that were unbolted here from the top, is that they might have removed the motor or swapped it or attempted to, or maybe they wanted to change those motor mounts and they either started to unbolt it and they said, never mind, let's just send it to auction. Don't know. So when I talked to the guys from where I picked it up, they said they hooked up a slave cable to it. They got no power or anything, even on the screen. That's why they had it marked as a parts unit. So what I'm gonna do first is just tighten up all those loose connections. This has got good power and everything on it right now. So I'm gonna run the slave cable over. I have the batteries on a charger maintainer. I'm gonna try to rehab them. They only had like 9.8 volts. I'm hoping that they'll be good. And then I'm gonna see if I can at least get some power on the screen because if the screen's no good, that's not a good sign. Then if I get some power to the screen, We'll move to putting some fluids in there and we'll see if we can get it to crank over. I'm gonna have to put something around that bad splice though. <clears throat> Thank you. Ooh, I guessed right. Do you wanna go put this wrench back on my workbench for me? Thank you. Sweet pea. Yeah. All right, I finished tightening up all the loose wires and then the ones that were in there that were like open, I just kind of covered them up with some electrical tape. It's nothing serious because I'm just trying to see if it's got power. So in here is that breaker that was open. It's in the open position. It was sort of in the middle, like it had tripped, but it's on now. I'm not gonna bother moving all that over, but those were loose too. Close this up. And then like the old ones on this side, you have to move this switch down to normal because then it has an off and a dead crank switch. And then there are some resets and things over here too that I don't really know too much about yet, but let's see what happens. So I already got the sleeve plugged in on that end. And then let's see if that screen lights up. Oh, we do, we got some life. Local e-stop, voltage configuration change, gen set mode powering down, low fuel level. Obviously there's no fuel in there. Well, it's got power on the screen. Looks like this generator has almost 4,000 hours on it. I don't know how you shut the screen off. Interesting. All right, well, I would assume that there's a way to shut the screen off. It doesn't just stay on ready to crank. Well, no, it's not. There's no fluids in it. Low fuel. All right. So I guess does that 
Screen go off if you move this to off. Didn't go off. Interesting. Because I would assume that screen doesn't just stay on all the time. Maybe that's why that main breaker is there. It goes off obviously when I do this, right? Okay. All right, well, let's put some fuel and stuff in it and see how it goes. And since that countdown was just about to end while I was sitting here recording, I want to see if that indeed does power down the screen at zero. Cool, it does. Everything in the fuel strainer in the tank, from what I could see, looks clean. So just go ahead and fill it. I'm not going to fill it all the way. I guess I'll leave this open just to see if by chance anything starts to leak. I fix a generator, but I can't put the fuel cap on. I don't see anything leaking, not obviously. It's not to say it's not going to start leaking when it primes or anything. The next thing will be to put some coolant in. It says it takes 6.1 quarts. Okay, it's definitely not full, but that's what it's getting. All right, so I got to fill the oil up now. It says five quarts from empty. Just putting Rotella T4, 15 weight 40 in there. All right, fluids have been put in. Slave cables hooked back up. Now I'm gonna turn the breaker on and we'll see what happens. Still says low fuel level. Maybe I need to, okay, I reset it. Powering down. Oh, maybe that's the screen. It's priming up. I'll give it a second since there was no fuel in the system. Prime it up is a good sign. And I guess from what I know about these, I did not read the technical manual is it's not like those where you actually hold the start. You just like, it's like newer vehicles where you just move it to start and it goes through its own starting procedure. So it tried to start probably because, see now it's gonna give me a fault because the entire injection pump system probably was not primed. So I'm probably gonna have to do this a couple of times. It's cranking, so I gotta figure out why it doesn't wanna start. I'll do a little bit of troubleshooting. Pretty sure I figured out why it's cranking but not starting. What I did, here's your incoming fuel to the injection pump. I removed one of these while it was cranking. Saw no fuel going to the injector out of the pump. So remove this, and then while it was priming, no fuel coming out of here. Then there was no fuel coming out of the drain. Then removed this, which is coming from the electric pump that primes everything from the fuel tank. On this panel here, here's that electric pump that runs. This little thing right here is a strainer. And I was like, well, maybe the strainer's plugged up. It really wasn't. There, there was a little bit of crap in there. It wouldn't have obstructed it at all. It was just doing its job more than likely from when the system was drained. The last little bit of fuel that came out just settled out. You can actually see a little bit of rust stain at the bottom of this little plug. Uh, use like half inch extensions to take it off. And it's kind of spring loaded and you can kind of see it fits in there. But what I did that's making me think that that electric pump isn't working is I went to go prime it and you can't really see in the camera that well, but there's an inlet and I just kind of put my finger over it. You can feel the pump vibrating and it's not really sucking. You should feel a little bit of sucking. It's the same pump as the auxiliary pump that would bring fuel into the tank, and it's right behind it. Same connector and everything. These are also basically the same pump that's like the newer generation on these. It's just in a slightly different configuration. So what I'm gonna do is swap from the auxiliary one. Hopefully that one's good. See if that will do the trick. Uh, that's gonna be the easiest because I don't need to do any splicing of wires or using gator clips or anything like that and it already has the proper an4 fittings or at least they look like an4s and then i'm going to put some caps on the auxiliaries just to make sure no crap gets in there and we will reprime and see if it works all right changing out that pump was unsuccessful makes me think that the pump was not the problem i'm thinking that there might be some sort of obstruction 
in the fuel pickup line or something. I did try to stick my arm in there, but I can't get it down deep enough. So these newer generators, they actually have a hookup similar to the older ones uh, where you had the auxiliary in. You can actually siphon fuel out and I have this temporary setup. And what I did was disconnect the line going out and hook it up and it runs off of a Ryobi battery. And I used one of the fittings from my auxiliary fuel line adapter kit and I have fuel, confirmed that it is drawing fuel up from the tank, hooked it up, and I'm gonna let it run for a little while to prime the system. I disconnected that pump again, just for some reason, if why the generator was trying to run doesn't just start spraying fuel. And we'll see if it cranks and fires. Still starving for fuel, but we'll give it a second. <coughs> give it some more time to get fuel over there. I guess you have to close the contactor. Or so everything's there, it's at 60. I can see fuel is making its way all the way back to the tank. It booted up, it's running and making power. That's a fantastic sign. So uh, I'll have to figure out why. Maybe just those two pumps are completely bad. Uh, I'll have to figure that out and get it running the way that it's supposed to. Work on the motor mounts and fixing the wires, but looks like I got myself a good unit here. I figured out why it was not pulling fuel out of the tank the way that it was supposed to. I used my little Ryobi compressor. I removed the pump and I just blew air in and bubbles came right out. Um, so there was no obstruction with the fuel pickup. And what I did was that little um, setup that I had pulling fuel out of here, even though it's not the right pump, it still had the same plumbing-ish setup. I did not completely hardwire it in, but I plumbed it in there if you want me to get out of the way so you can kind of see it. And as soon as I did that, and you can see it starts to move fuel right away. So both of those pumps in there were bad, the auxiliary one and the primary one. I'm just gonna leave that on and we're gonna start it back up. You good, kid? <laughs> all right, so none of the breakers, all the slave cables and everything are hooked up. And now what I wanna do is start it and actually put it underneath a little bit of load. It's not gonna be a full 10 kW. That wakes it up. If it was hardwired in, it would start to prime itself, but we've already been doing it, so it's ready to crank. It'll go through its little idle for a little bit, and then it'll come up to speed. It's set at, under adjustments, 240 volts. And then to get it to the next screen for all your other settings, you hold the previous and next. 
for a couple seconds, 60 hertz. The governor gain, I honestly don't know what those things do, but it's at 60 hertz, 240 volts. That's also what the setting is in on the inside. Um, I'll show you that at a later time. So we'll close the AC circuit interrupter. It's closed. It's showing the voltage going out as well. And then your current for the two legs. That's basically your percent load gauge. I have the 5,000 watt heater hooked up to the main lugs. And then this is hooked up to the convenience outlet. So you can see that comes off leg one. And it will adjust frequency. It's already starting to puff some smoke out, but it automatically adjusts, the governor adjusts the engine for load. It takes a little bit for that heater to actually start pulling its full amperage. There it goes, it just loaded up. And it kept right up with it. So it's doing exactly what it needs to do. This is a great sign. Puffing a little bit of smoke, but that's to be expected. I figured this thing probably hadn't really run under any load. Hey crew. <laughs> you can see the out there. This is going to finish up my part one. Uh, I'm going to start downloading the technical manuals and finding the parts I need and really neatening everything up, adding to my projects here, but this is definitely a good score. And uh, I'm happy to get these and start being able to do some research as far as making some kits available through my business for these, like I have for the uh, Tactical Quiet Generator series. Thanks for watching, hopefully you found it helpful. So these were some of the things sitting in the generator. There was the auxiliary fuel line, grounding wire, battery hold downs. Uh, it seems like one of the J hooks is missing unless it's vibrated to the bottom of it somewhere. The two holders, uh, some plumbing, not sure what that's for. Uh, some of the stuff for the grounding rods. The grounding rods are still in the generator there. Looks like wire was stripped or something. And a bunch of random hardware and stuff like that. The wire schematic, and yes, this one was with it. Just saying it where it was destined for, and it came from 29 Palms, California. Generator is owned by the Marine Corps.